Well, today we're going to be installing a new cam in my 69 Chevy truck. It's got a 5.3 liter V8 from my 2002 Chevy Silverado and a 4L60E two-wheel drive transmission. It's got LS1 intake, Corvette, all the Corvette accessories on the front drive system here. Corvette alternator, power steering, disc brakes, um, headers, and a whole bunch of other little things. Well, here's the cam we'll be installing. It's part number 54455-11. It's an LSR series, um, new series by ComCam. And there's the springs we'll be installing there. Comp 918 springs. Just got stock heads for the moment. Might be upgrading that later. So I'll see how it works. With just stock heads and intake with this can. Okay, we'll go ahead and open up the can. Check it out before we install it. Start tearing into everything. Here's the uh, card on it. It's got a 604 intake and 610 lift on the exhaust. Uh, the uh, duration is 215 on the intake and 223 on the exhaust and 112 lift separation. So it should be pretty awesome. There's the cam itself, brand new, wrapped up. Yeah. Now it's time to start tearing into it. I'm going to pull off the coil covers for starters valve covers. Probably will take out this, take out the radiator, drain the coolant, pull off the water pump, and the main crank pulley. Or harmonic balance or whatever you call it. Okay, now we have the coolant draining out. That's about ready to take off the radiator hoses. One coil cover is off. Air intakes off. Electric fans are unplugged. And I gotta figure out what to do with this temperature probe thingy here. It's directly wired to that thing there, so I have to cut it or something. Get this radiator out so I can get the cam out. And then I'll take out the water pump next. Alright, well, got the radiator out. Sitting right there. Pretty much the same as it would be on a, any, any Chevy truck. This is a 69, but yeah. Basically the same. Now we're going to pull off the water pump. weight of the water pumps on this last one, so that's why it's so hard to get in there. And there we go. Okay, now that the water pump's off, you can see the timing color cover, Marnik balancer there. I've got a crank uh, puller for this uh, flywheel here, I mean for the harmonic balancer and I'll show you that how to use that in a bit. It's just a kind of like a claw thing and it grabs in behind these and take out this. Okay, here's the uh, puller I'm going to use to pull off the uh, harmonic balancer. We're going to loosen the harmonic balancer bolt with an impact wrench. Okay, main crank pulley. Oh. Alright, well now the crank pulley is off. And now the timing cover can be removed. There's a whole bunch of 10 millimeter bolts holding that on as well. There's what it looks like inside. Okay, now the timing cover's off. Uh, see the uh, timing chain and the uh, oil pump there. We're gonna take off that uh, timing gear there and uh, pull out the cam after we take off valve covers and put and pull out the push rods. Alright, well I've got the uh, coil packs off now, valve covers are off, and I just 
pulled all the uh, rockers and push rods off. Laid out there on the floor. I'm going to put in new hardened push rods from Molly Hall and hardened push rods and the 918 springs. Next. Now you can see all the rocker arms are all right there. A whole bunch of little 8mm bolts holding them on. Push rods are out. Now, we can start on the cam. After I get the cam installed, I will uh, go ahead and get those, change out the springs. I'm going to hold the valves up with uh, compressed air, hopefully, to uh, hold them up. Okay, to remove the cam, we're going to take out those three bolts. So we can take this gear off to lower the timing and get the timing chain off. Okay, I've aligned the two dots of the on the timing gear to the crane so that when we put in the new cam I just line up this gear with this point on the or this little dot on the uh, crank and uh, put on the timing chain. Now we're going to remove the stock timing gear here. I have to set down the camera for this. Okay, just grabbed that timing gear, separated it from the train, and let the chain sit down here on this on the crank. This other gear here, we'll pull that back up once we, uh, yeah, when we need to reinstall it. Now, for the lifters, I was planning on just spinning the cam around and hoping they stay up, which should be interesting. Um, I actually think I'm going to grab a water pump bolt here to grab onto the cam. We also have to take this cover here is what holds in the cam. There's four bolts that hold it on. Not that big of a deal. I almost think I hear a lifter falling down when I turn the cam. Hmm, have to investigate that. Okay, well I've just been messing with the cam, saw cam still in there. Um, I've been spinning it around and using a push rod on each lifter to feel if it will stay up when I spin the cam. And they all stay up, they all will hold up with the push rod sitting on top. You know, it's hard, you know, it's a bit, it takes a bit to push it back down to make it fall. So they all stay up, except for there's this one right here. Um, for whatever reason is worn out and it whenever I spin the cam and I have a push rod sitting on here it follows the cam it will not stay up so I'm gonna have to get a magnet probably like a small magnet which I'll probably have to go buy and stick it down there to hold up that lifter while I pull out the cam all right well that one lifter that wouldn't stay up I got a screwdriver with a magnet on the end of it it's a real thin screwdriver and it's got one of those extendy magnet things and uh, extended out the magnet and stuck it on that uh, lifter. So now that's holding up the lifter. And I've taken off the cam plate cover, as you can see there. So now it's just a matter of spinning the cam a couple times and pulling it out. <laughs> 